Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Let's Make a Game. In between the episodes I actually tried to achieve making a working save and load functionality and I think I figured something out that is quite elegant. We are going to save stuff into an ini file but of course that will take a little bit of effort. Also, uh, overviewing all of my stuff right here, I kind of decided that I want to do a little revamp of the system since I now better know what I want to go for. So what we should have is basically a galaxy map and we should also have a system map and last but not least a world map for our three types of views that we should be able to have. Now one thing I thought you could do but you cannot do is have multiple rooms in one room. I thought you could just, you know, overlay the rooms. If you can do that somehow, let me know down in the comment section. However, I don't think it's possible and therefore my original idea will not work as such. So I thought what we do today is we are going to make an example of how we would be able to save all of the variables, all of the stats and whatever we want to save in a separate file and afterwards load it up again. And we're going to do this very simplistically. I think we're just going to grab a bunch of these uh, global variables. For instance, we could go with these two. So uh, let's say the player would be able to actually change this within the options menu, then we would want to save the new number to an ini file and after we load up the game, then it should take these new values that the player chose. Anyways, let's push this to the side a little bit. We're gonna keep that in mind. However, we are going to create a few new things. So the first thing we're going to do is create a sprite. And I want to call this, let's say, main menu. Why the heck not? We're gonna edit that bad boy and we're gonna give it a size. Let's say 128 by 48 or something like that. Yeah, that should be all right. And we're going to add a very, very simple button. The first one is going to be uh, something along the lines of new game. Yeah, there we go. We're gonna, yeah, it's already in the center more or less. We're gonna add yet another graphic. This time it's going to be uh, continue, right? Or we could say continue last save. I'm not sure if we're gonna have multiple saves. I don't think it would be necessary, but it could be implemented. I'm sure about it. Let's go for the next one, which should be options or something like that, right? And last but not least, we can have something along the lines of save and quit. I mean, it's just an example, right? So we're gonna simply do that. Beautiful. Okay, these are our four main menu buttons for the time being. Of course, there are gonna be some more, but we have to get started somewhere. Now, within the objects, of course, we want to create the exact same object. So object uh, main menu, I guess. We're also gonna grab that sprite and this could possibly be on the very top, right? So minus 100. Okay, that should be good. Now we have that main menu. Let's place it maybe right here. That should be good. And within the room worlds uh, that we currently have, I'm gonna add these four graphics. Now, of course, this is not where it is supposed to be. It is just so that we have buttons and I can exemplify the loading and saving code. So let's grab the object menu. We're gonna have one here, one there, one there, and one right here. And of course they're gonna be within the room. We can zoom away from them. I'm, I'm totally aware of that. It's just to exemplify things. Okay, now we need a bunch of code, I guess. Let's create two scripts. One is gonna be the main menu, I guess, uh, sprites. Let's call it that. Oh, I totally forgot. I already made the scripts. Main menu sprites, there we go. I actually prepared it uh, before the episode. I'm so good. These are the two new scripts that we want. And of course we want to attach them to our uh, main menu object. One is gonna go in the create event, I guess. Let's actually already add that. Or maybe both are actually gonna go there. No, that's a lie. Only the main menu sprites are gonna go in the create event. And then we want, of course, a mouse button left released event. 
And the reason for that is, of course, once we click the button, we want to load up this save and load script. So there we go. That's what we do. Save this bad boy. And now we are going to go into the sprites. In this script right here, we want to set up the graphics for the individual buttons. So I would say we're going to do this with a simple if statement. We know that our buttons have a different placement within the room. Uh, let me actually get that room. You can see the first one is at Y equals one times global tile size and then three times global tile size and then six and then nine, etc, etc. So we're going to take that knowledge as our advantage. If y equals three times global dot tile size, right? Then we want the image index to be equal to zero. And we're going to end it right here. And this is, of course, the new game button. Did I make a mistake? Yes, of course, a bracket right there. Then the next button should be y six times global dot tile size. There we go. And then the image index should be one, which equals in what was that? The continue option, right? Next up, y equals nine times global dot tile size. Then the image index should be. Oh, hold the phone. I made a mistake here. Let me check that again. It's one times global tile size, then three, then four, five. And OK, so one and then plus two each. OK, so the first one is just one times global tile size. Then we got three, then five and then seven. And then it should be right. Anyways, the image index two should be the options menu. And if y equals seven times global dot tile size, then the image index equals three, which is the save and quit functionality, right? Now, one more thing is missing, I think. Yeah, of course, we need to stop the sprite. So image speed should be at zero. So the images stay still. OK, let's already check this out just to be sure we haven't made a mistake. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. They are actually objects within our room and I can zoom away from them. However, we should be able to click them and actually get a functionality out of them. So now we can actually edit the save and load script. And for that, I want to get my global variables a little bit closer. So this script is executed as soon as we click any of the buttons. So now we could say, for instance, the uh, new game button is the first. And if the image index equals zero, then we want to execute something, right? So for the time being, we don't know what we want to execute. It's possibly, you know, uh, an any file that we save with the default everything so we can start fresh. And the next button is the continue button. That means if image index equals uh, one, then we want to have the loading functionality, right? So this is going to be loading. Next up, we have the options for which we don't really have anything yet going on, but we can still set it up and it would lead us to the options that we still have to do. The loading we are going to do today, of course. And last but not least, we have the save and quit functionality. So let's say if image index equals three, then we want to save and quit, right? Cool. So let's start with the saving process. First of all, this actually makes a lot more sense since we currently have nothing to load, right? So we first need to save something. In order to do that, we first of all want to figure out if there is already a save game file. And if there is, we want to get rid of it because we are going to create a new one. And that's how an overwriting process in GameMaker works. You first delete it. So if file exists and we want to define a good name for this, let's just call it save.ini. I guess that is a good generic name. So if that file exists, then we want to delete it. And of course, that is an existing file in the folder structure. I'm going to show you where it exactly is. Good. So now that we have made this check, we can continue by opening the any file. And this command also makes a new any file directly. So this open command actually also creates this new save.ini file. 
Good. Now that we have it open, we can actually write stuff into it. And of course, we want to write stuff that the player can influence. Uh, that could also be the positioning of an object or its orientation. You can go into real detail. So let's say I want to, first of all, um, keep everything that the player has set in the world options. So I'm just going to make a category world options. We still have the any file open, so now I can use the command any write real. Instead of real, you can also use a string. Uh, real is just a number and string, of course, is a string. Now we first of all have to define the section, so we can basically make a title for world options. So I'm gonna call this section world options, something like this. We divide it by a comma, now we need to input the key. So this is basically our variable within the any file. And I'm gonna call my first variable tile size. So we are gonna actually store the tile size variable just as an example. So tile size is gonna be my variable within the any file and what we want to store is of course the global dot tile size that we currently have, uh, assuming that the player for instance could change it. Cool, let's add some more world options. I would say any write real and um, world options, of course, that's still the same title. Of course, you need to beware of the spelling so it doesn't make another title. We're gonna have the camera speeds that potentially can also be changed within an options menu. And of course, that comes from the global camera speed. And we continue with another world options section. This one we're gonna call zoom speed and of course we get it from global.zoom speed. Uh, for instance, you could also save the room you were in. You could just make a variable save room and then define it as room for instance and then save it uh, under the world options. So you can directly go to the room you were in last. Good, let's add another category. Let's say GUI visibility is another category that we want to save. So we're gonna write something in the document that we still have open under the category GUI visibility um, and that word. And the first one of course is the zero one. So the lowest left corner button and we want to save it as global, let's actually see, um, global GUI visible. So we can simply add that right here. Cool, now we have to do this with all of our GUI elements. So right now we are doing 0101 and that should be global button GUI 0101 unlocked equals no 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 not set it. Just use the current value in order to save it in this string here or under this variable in the any document. So let me actually finish all of these guys uh, for all of my GUI buttons. As you know, we currently have three categories with each three additional buttons on top of it. Just in case you don't remember, look at this. We have the three main categories and then three buttons each. Some of them are visible or unlocked and some of them are not unlocked. And there we go. I added all of my buttons as you can see. I hope I didn't make any mistakes. But now that we have saved everything that we wanted to save, well, let's just assume that. Of course, there are going to be thousands of things that we want to save eventually. But for now, for this example, we just want to save the states of the GUI buttons and some stuff that the player potentially could change. However, now we want to also close the document and you can simply do that with the any uh, underscore close command. Okay, great. We're not gonna yet program in the quit functionality. What we want to do now is the loading right here. And for that, we first of all, again, want to check if a file exists with the name save.ini. And if that is the case, then we want to execute the loading. And if that is not the case, then we potentially want to add like a, a notification for the player that there is no save game or something like that. Anyways, uh, if the file exists, then of course we want to open it so we can read from it. So open save.ini. Okay, and once it is open, we can add our world options. Of course, that's what we did first of all, right? Let me actually see. Yeah, world options and we wanted the tile size, camera speed and zoom speed. 
So we don't want to write something in the document now, we want to read from it. So we first want to set the variable that we want to change, which in our case is global.tile size. We want to set that to whatever is in the document. So our tile size would be any underscore read underscore real. And of course we want to get it from the world options section and we want to get the tile size 32. Now this 32 is of course what the default is of the game. So if it fails to actually collect this variable, it will just go with the default value here. Next up we went for the camera speed, which is any read real under the world options, then it's the camera speed and of course the default should be 10, I believe, that's what I set it to. Then last but not least the zoom speed, which should be any read real world options and it's the zoom speed variable from the any document which is set to 1.05 by default. Great, okay, now we got this back into the game and the player can load these guys by clicking on the continue button. Of course we also want to get the GUI visibility into the joint, so that's what we do. We want to set for instance the global.buttons GUI01 visible and we want to set it equal to the any state. So uh, any read real, it's not world options, it's GUI visibility, oh my gosh, visibility. And it is the O1 section that we want to get it from. And if that fails, then the default, I guess, should be false. Next up, we have the global button GUI 0101 unlocked, which should be any read real and GUI visibility. Oh my gosh, that went well. And then 0101, and that should by default equal to false. There we go. Now we have to do the same thing for all of the button categories, just like we did it down below here. And we then should be able to get that into an any file and then even change something within the any file in order to change it in the game. Anyways, let me quickly finish that shebang here. And there we go. We got the GUI visibility fully done, I guess. And last but not least, we shouldn't forget to close it, right? so we can save the RAM of keeping that file open. Now, I believe we are ready for a test. I'm actually not sure. There might be a mistake still. Okay, first things first. What we want to do is actually have a look into the appropriate folder. So if you didn't know, here is the folder. It is within your app data. You have to type percent app data percent into your search window. And then it is within the local and then your project name. So my project name is automation. If we have a look into the automation folder, there is currently nothing there. However, let's go ahead and actually hit this uh, save and quit button. Currently, we are not quitting out of the game. But what we should be seeing, look at this, it actually popped up. There is now a save.ini. Let's open this up within Notepad++. Right here, you can see that we have our two categories alphabetically sorted. We have our world options and you can see they are being stored as this number and the variables that we set it. And you can also see that one means true and zero means false. So currently the number two, three category is set to false. Let's actually test this out in the game. Number two and three, yeah, it indeed is false. We cannot click it. However, if I change this within my file, so we're gonna set this to true and I'm actually also gonna save this bad boy. We can close it up and restart our game. There we go, we are again in a new game, so the production thing is still not unlocked. However, if we hit the continue button, then we of course enable the loading script. There we go. And if we click this button again, look at this, it is actually unlocked. And with this procedure, you can basically store anything you would like. However, whenever you start a room, it is going to get into the state where you built it. So it's, it's kind of a tricky system. You cannot store everything. For instance, how can I track all the positions in the orbit of the moons, etc, etc. How do I save all of these planets? 
and their special features that is gonna be very tricky and for that sole purpose I decided to revamp this entire system and you will actually have a look at that the next time. So it should be a lot better and a lot more overviewish. But other than that, I would say we're gonna wrap it up at this point. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section. Have a great time and hopefully I'm going to catch you in the next one. Bye bye.